All right, Teak, we lead off with the Cincinnati Bengals, their head coach. If I read between the lines, I mm -hmm. don't think my partner's a huge believer in Zach Taylor. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, uh, he's got a, he's got a lot to prove, and um, you know, very confident uh -huh. for lack of success he had as a rookie head coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's going into year two. He did meet the media on how Cincinnati would handle number one overall pick Joe Burrow in training camp this summer. In inbounds, out of bounds. The Bengals' approach to Burrow's training camp is in or out. I mean, it's in because what's your alternative, <laughs> Ryan Finley? I like. Ryan uh, as a backup. I don't know if he's your starting quarterback uh, as a bridge even. So I think this is the perfect way to do it. Uh, I mean, Joe Burrow, is he He might, is he as old as Ryan Finley? They might be the same close to the same age. No, Finley's 25 and, and Joe Burrow's 24. I know he's older than Darnold and Josh Allen and yeah. Lamar Jackson. Yeah, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow will be 24 this year. Finley's 25 this year. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, I mean, th what, what are you talking about? You're talking about a guy who played in a uh, an ACC uh, school in Ryan Finley that had some success, not a ton, mm -hmm. and a guy who won the Heisman Trophy was a national champion, played against some of the best defenses in college football over the last year and made him look silly to be honest with you he decimated clemson he had a they did a number on alabama uh i think joe burrow can be ready um but it's very uncertain with those kids that have one pop year in college and that's it yeah. um so i'm saying inbounds but okay. it, cautiously so yeah well i'm gonna say inbounds as well too but you know you say well you know what's the option to me it's not about ryan finley to me it's about if you throw him in there too early and and he's drowning a little bit you know the the effects could be could be lasting negatively i don't think that joe burrow is going to um get swallowed up by a playbook no. or the complexities he's smart kid, of the nfl man. smart kid confident yep. kid veteran kid uh, also, you know, he was around Brady, who came from the NFL. So, you know, he knows, he just has that mindset. Yeah. I think Not Tom Brady, Joe Brady. Joe Brady, <laughs> who's now with Carolina. Yep. I think he's ready to go. I, I really do. Um, you know, the one thing, and it's, it, listen, it's very different. And Aaron Rodgers talked about this, where kids get thrust in there right away. But if there were fans, then, and let's face it, Bengals attendance has been a bit of an issue. Ohio mm -hmm. kid. You know, if Ryan Finley starting opening day, yeah, maybe it still sells out because it's opening day. But if Joe Burrow's playing, it's definitely selling out. But that doesn't even matter. You're not trying to sell tickets because nobody's going to the games this year. Yeah. Joe Burrow's ready. He is ready, and it's the absolute right move. And, and you know what? If he's swimming, you dial back. Yeah, and by bit. the way, they got a ton of talent on the yeah, offensive side of the ball. It's just looking at, and I forget about Auden Tate. He's no room for him. And John Ross, if he ever stays healthy, um, he could be a good player as well. But A.J. Green, T. Higgins, who they drafted in the second round, Tyler yeah. Boyd, I mean, they got some, some weapons. Joe Mixon? Joe Mixon is a Mixon's good. very good, very good running back. And Gio Bernard good. is still there so That's right. I mean, about you. they got some talent on that team yeah still a little ticked off at um at the way he started the season right yeah back. yeah i mean yeah, i had him in fantasy and he and mixon got hot <laughs> when, when i was already buried yep all right moving on quarterback lamar jackson high praise from battled wideout antonio brown he was on zoom session and he was connecting with the media and lamar was dishing the praise all right, so Lamar putting his uh, his opinion out there, and also Russell Wilson's been on the record. He wanted to bring AB to Seattle. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady, Tom Brady as well. A lot of people want him. Uh, inbounds, out of bounds. Players who speak positively on behalf of Brown are hurting their image with NFL fans. I'm going to say out of bounds, BT, because how you look at a person uh, from the outside looking in is very different than how it actually may be. And A.B. was a pain in the butt in Pittsburgh, and he really didn't get a chance in Oakland. But in the in, in the places where he's kind of s had started anew, so to speak, where New England or these private workouts that we're talking about, he shines, man, because he works his butt off. And at the end of the day, as NFL players, you just want to respect a guy. You don't necessarily have to like him. You want to respect a guy. And I think... Tom Brady saw this, and I think Lamar Jackson was 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 saying this. He works harder than anybody else in in in, in, in on the field uh, when he's with you. So I'm going to say out of bounds. I don't think they're hurting their image because they're speaking their truth as they know him, not how we as outsiders perceive him. Well, I agree. I would say out of bounds as well. I also think people are smart enough to have a little separation between, you know, one person and the subject that they're speaking on or yeah. about. I mean. You know, Lamar Jackson from minute one has comported himself like a pro. And Russell Wilson, I mean, I don't know if there's a dirty blemish anywhere on this guy's resume. Even even the ones he could try to hide if, if, there, if there was something. 
he just seems to be one of those guys who's close to perfect, even though nobody is. So, uh, no, I, I don't th- I think fans judge, I hope fans judge people for uh, certainly how they play, how they act, what they put out there on social media. And those guys are generous. They're aware of what's going on in the world. So, no, out of bounds. I mean, we all know that AB's had his battles and uh, at times has acted like a complete clown. And I'm not sure of how stable he's been. And uh, I'm not trying to take a shot at him. Um, you know, when he was acting like a, like, like a, like, honestly, it, with the Raiders, that bothered me because that was, that was so sub-professional, you know, claims of racism against the, against the GM and just, it was a circus, right? So I'm, I'm kind of separating that from what I think could be legitimately something wrong, uh, mentally, psychologically, and hopefully he's rectified that, but. No, nah, I mean, come on. Lamar Jackson's a great kid. Nobody's going to get that twisted. Indians swept the White Sox. First doubleheader of the young season yesterday's play, too. A little Ernie Banks. However, the Players Association is now surveying players to see if they would be in favor of playing. You ready, Teak? Back yeah. to uh, Little League here. Oh, Two seven-inning games instead of perhaps nine-inning games for the opener. Or maybe you go nine in the opener and seven for the double dip. Reportedly, union head Tony Clark's already contacted Deputy Commissioner Dan Halem regarding the issue. So, MLB doubleheaders this season that were short would be in or out. Out of bounds, man. I mean, that's just messing with the basic fabric of the game. I get that there is a crunch and urgency to get games in, especially after we just saw the Philadelphia Phillies suspend a game or postpone a game after two um, not players, but two members of their organization. One was a coach, I believe, uh, tested positive for coronavirus, sub the, Mar- the Marlins visit there. So I'm going to say out of bounds, mm-hmm. even though it's a novel way of thinking about getting a game in. It's just seven innings is for Little League, man. It's not for, not for the majors. <laughs> um, I think that that's out of bounds, too. Um, you know, maybe... You, you draft something up, you have everybody sign off on it, and it's like a last-ditch wild card where you can pull it out. If you have to rip it out in September, if you have to squeeze X amount of games in there, it's, it's at least an option. We always talk about having multiple plans. Yeah. And the first plan was a three-city bubble. That wasn't plausible. That didn't work out. You know, then, you know, 75 games, all right, that's too much. All right, 60, here we are. But you still need multiple plans within the absolute plan I wouldn't implement it tomorrow, mm. uh, but I would possibly revisit this and just in case, you know, you, you have to play, say, 11 games in, in six days, something crazy. Yeah. And you know what? You but probably will have to do that at some point. Is my, it, would it be better than your plan of driving from city to city between games? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's less taxing. I mean, you yeah, don't want to have, a thir- you, you know, sitting in. Backs could tighten up. Things mm-hmm. get a little stiff. Um, probably a little bit more practical. Yeah, probably. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when we drop fresh content.